I be friends with somebody who hurt my friend, even if that person never really has done anything to me? And this is a tricky situation. The very first thing that I think is that it doesn't matter if this person hurt your friend or not. Is it wise to become their friend? Because there are some character traits in people that even if they haven't done them personally to you, you should just be careful to avoid them. The Bible speaks of an angry man and how we ought not to be friends with an angry man unless their, their anger rubs off on us, unless we develop their habits. Another type of person I can think of in this situation is a railer, is the person that is attempting to be your friend. Are they somebody who maybe they split a church by casting false accusations or by being a gossip? Because even though somebody hasn't gossiped about you doesn't mean they're not overtaken in being a gossip or a railer. And 1 Corinthians 5.11 talks that we ought not have fellowship with a railer, somebody who's overtaken in continual critical spirit and accusations. And are they somebody who makes a mockery of sin and maybe they have hurt that other person by you know, that person doesn't have the same standards as I do, so I'm going to make fun of them or treat them disdainfully. The Bible says also um, that a backbiter and a talebearer, that we should have an angry countenance towards that type of situation. So if somebody is a gossip or a backbiter or a talebearer and they're known for that, we should definitely step away. Now that doesn't mean necessarily that we need to, you know, pretend like they are a social leper. <laughs> you still should be a Christian and kind and courteous and encourage them in the ways of the Lord, but should they be your close friend? Probably not. Also, the Bible says that a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving fa favor rather than silver and gold. And if you start hanging out with a gossip, chances are people are going to think like attracts like. She's probably a gossip as well. Or if you start hanging out with somebody who ripped apart a church, <laughs> people are going to start being like, hmm, maybe they're, maybe they're have a rebellious spirit. And, you know, there's just so much that goes on along in church splits. What I do know is that I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says <laughs> that somebody should tear up another church. So I would always be careful of hanging out with somebody who left a church in a non-godly way. There's different than leaving in a church in a, in a godly manner. So be careful of that. But let's just say that it's not any of those situations. And it's a personal issue between your friend and this person. Now, one thing you could do is you could grab a dog by the ears. The Bible says that he that meddleth with strife that doesn't belong with him is like someone who grabs a dog by the ears. And I always feel like when you do that, you, that dog's gonna feel aggressive and you're gonna get bit. The Bible has meddling with things belonging not to him, but also that it is an honor to cease from strife, but every fool will be meddling. It is not our job to determine who was right and who was wrong in those situations. Because there's three sides of every story. This person's side, this person's side, and the truth. And it is not our job to decide who was right and who was wrong. And Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So if this isn't a situation where somebody is overtaken in a sin, step away. <laughs> But how do you handle it? Because it's really awkward because you know that your friend is, has hard feelings towards this person and maybe this friend is really comfortable with your friendship and trusts you. But either way, I would approach that friend and explain your heart and ask them to trust you that you are not meddling or gossiping or taking sides. And what's really important about not taking sides is that if you don't take anybody's side, by meddling or trying to be judge and jury and executioner, 
then you are going to be long suffering and forbearing if something bad that if your friend also does something that maybe there's a casting a shadow of doubt upon their reputation that you as an individual are the type of person who is just good and loving to the just and the unjust but you're going to leave it to god to decide which is which you are just going to be a christian friend so don't be a meddler but be wise and talk to your friend about it and also i wanted to say that when you try to be friends with this other person who hurt your friend i would just keep it on like don't let them talk about your friend either then you'll just see oh wait they are gossip <laughs> i need to step away but i would just caution you in general as a woman and just be careful about becoming super close with anybody other than the lord and your husband because of flesh and familiarity breeds contempt that's i just have to leave it with that familiarity breeds contempt just be cautious of your dependency upon friendships and relationships be friendly be a christian but still be guarded <laughs> Lastly, if you are the friend who was hurt, let me encourage you in this. God put this verse on my heart for a situation where I was hurt by somebody repeatedly and then somebody else wanted to be that person's friend and I just wanted to be like, watch out, that person is awful and dangerous and all of the things. But some people are just really good at masking who they are and it's going to hurt you worse by trying to meddle than by just letting the wise come to an understanding on their own. But God still put in my heart, Proverbs 14, 10, the heart knoweth his own bitterness. And as God has forgiven us, when we try to forgive somebody else, we shouldn't have malice and want that person to suffer and not have good friendships or not have a successful marriage, or just waiting for, you know, the Bible says that he that diggeth a pit shall fall therein, and you're just like waiting for them to fall in the pit so everybody will know who they are and what they did. If we have truly forgiven, and our friend is a good friend, and our friend is a godly, uplifting friend who might encourage that person in their walk with the Lord, or maybe, maybe they're not, you know, maybe it's just going to be neutral. But we should be happy for the other person, for the person who hurt us. Somebody once said that when you've truly forgiven somebody, you can look to the Lord and say, God, please don't let anything bad happen to that person because of what they did to me. Let Bless them and help them to be closer to you in their life. But please, God, spare them from any punishment that may happen as a result of of what happened and that right there is godly ground so just leave you with that